Salutation, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a new show called Dumb Review from a Dumb Reviewer. I will review things like books, movies, shows, comic book stories. But the catch is, I suck at reviewing. But hopefully, it will entertain you. And yes, there will be spoilers. Consider yourself warned. Now, without further ado, the first thing I will review is a book called Crazy Rich Asians, written by Kevin Kwan. At my last book club meet, yes, I was actually allowed to be invited. Certainly surprised me. But yes, at the、uh, book club meet, we decided to make it a thematic event. A book revolved around Asian culture. Easy peasy. Let's go get some Chinese food. Except the place I went to only accepted cash. And really, who still carry cash with them? It's all about the debit card life now. I had no cash on me. I did the next best thing. I bought food with my debit card from the nearest thing to the Chinese food, which was Mexican food. But to be more specific, it was Taco Bell. And by the nearest thing to Chinese food, I meant that it was literally the nearest thing to the Chinese food, like the place right next to it. After I got my Mexican food for this book club that revolved around Chinese culture, we dived into the book. The book is about a Chinese family that were so filthy rich they could buy wherever they wanted and do whatever they wanted. The story revolves around the relationship between Nick Young, the man with money, and Rachel Chu, the woman. With okay money, but not like filthy rich money. They lived and worked in New York, and then one day Nick decided to ask Rachel, "Do you want to go to my best friend's wedding in Singapore? It'll be cool. We'll have an adventure there, and you can meet my family." She agreed, and when they got to Singapore, she realized that Nick's family was like super filthy rich, like Wakanda forever rich. This is all good and dandy. Except Nick didn't say anything to Rachel about this. Drama follows, and all the family and friends in Singapore thought that Rachel was just a filthy gold digger, which is absolutely the furthest thing away from the truth. Some of the family and family friends were really, really mean to her. They even placed a dead fish on her bed and then wrote "gold digger" in like fish blood. As mean as these acts were. They pale in comparison to Eleanor, Nick's mom, on how she treated Rachel. She would act like a bitch, but not the in front of you type of bitch, but sort of like in a frenemy type of bitch way. The mom would say something like, "Oh, so you like to chase your dreams and become an economic professor at NYU? That's cool. It must be nice not to care about your family reputation and value." Unbeknownst to Rachel. Nick's mom hired some PI to dig up some dirt on her, just to show that you know what Rachel was not good enough to be for her son. As the story develops, Nick finds out about all these dirty things that were happening to Rachel. He was willing to sacrifice his relationship with his family and also the wealth just so that he can be with Rachel. Rachel believed that if this were to happen, in time he would prevent her from taking him away from the family, and that's not something. That she wants to do. At this point, you understand the interesting dynamic of the Asian family. There is a lot of respect that goes towards the elder. In this case, Eleanor's mother-in-law. She is like the OG of the family, and she is like the head of the empire. What she says is of the utmost importance. We found out that the grandmother, the OG, the Queen Bee, did not deem Eleanor to be worthy of her son's hand in marriage. So maybe this is why there was a high expectation for Rachel, which was like impossible to reach. At this point, the group focus onto the discussion of family reputation. It is important in Asian cultures that sometimes you have to make sacrifices to do what is best for the family, so that you don't lose face or dishonor the family name. I understand that there is personal happiness and also family reputation. I'm sure a balance could be reached. I. 
don't believe this to be a situation of either or. Luckily for my family, when we moved to Canada, they adapted to the Western philosophy. They were not picky on what I did or who I dated, just as long as I am happy with the decision that I made. And that in itself was good enough for them. While Nick and Rachel's situation was going on, we also followed the story of Astrid, who is the cousin of Nick. She also had a similar story. Astrid married Michael, a regular guy who wasn't filthy rich. Then throughout the book, you find that there were multiple clues on Michael cheating on Astrid, which is like crazy to me. One, she's like super hot. And two, she's like super rich. His issue is trying to earn the respect of the family saying that, you know what? He can't provide for the family all by himself without the family money. There was a super great twisty twist, but I will not share. You have to read the book. At the end of the book, it felt a little unfinished to me. Some plots and issues were not resolved, probably because I found out this was book one of a trilogy. So hopefully the answers will appear in the follow-up books. It was a pleasant read, so I would give it 7 out of 10. Our book club had decided that for the next meet, we will focus on book two. And next time, I'll be ready to bring cold hard cash so I could get some Chinese food this time. Until next time, stay classy. Someone forgot to wear a bra. Rumor is she was in a porno. Two girls, one cup of noodles. You know, I thought I would like that more than I did. The book is much better. Mm -hmm.